welcome back. In this video we are going to take a look at cookies versus tokens. We are going to learn about their differences and see how they work. First, let's get started with uh, taking a look at cookie-based authentication. So this diagram over here will be pretty similar to the one that I've shown you in the last video, but with a few changes. So how cookie-based authentication works is we have browser on the left and we have server on the right. First, the browser sends a set of credentials um, back to the server. So the server receives them and the server's job right now is to check whether the those credentials are valid. Now the checking happens here and if so, if the credentials are valid, server needs to create active session in the database. So in this scenario over here, credentials are valid and server creates this active session in database and what it also does is it places a cookie on the browser with the session ID that matches the active session in the database. And as you can see, we can see some sort of examples of that here. So we send this cookie to the browser and this is our session ID, let's say. Now what happens is when browser receives this cookie, um, it will by default save it and will include it on this domain over here with any further requests. So what happens here is browser now wants to request a protected resource and it has that cookie. So it simply sends that requ uh, request for protected resources and this cookie moves along. Now the server needs to verify um, this session's ID that it received against the database and if it finds the match, it is valid and we know who this client on the browser actually is. So now just so happened that the session ID is valid and matches the session ID stored in the active sessions in the database on the server side and server can thus send protected resources back to the browser. So cookie-based authentication is stateful. Uh, why? Because the authentication records uh, must be kept both on the server and on the client side. So the server needs to keep track of active sessions in the database like I've told you here. While on the front end a cookie is created that holds that session ID. And what happens in the end when the user logs out of the application, um, the session is destroyed both on the server, so this active session in database is destroyed, as well as this cookie over here on the client side is destroyed as well. Now let's take a look at the token based authentication, so we'll have a similar diagram but we will see the differences there. Okay, so now let's take a look at the token based authentication. So we have a similar diagram. On the left we have client. This time I didn't name this simply browser because when it comes to the token based authentication we can quite easily create an application that spans both the web application meaning browsers and the mobiles and even the desktop application using something like Electron in the Node.js world. So we have a client which is abstract and term for any of those and we have server on the right. So we start off again by client sending some set of credentials to the server, in this case username and password. So the server's job is to check if those credentials are valid and if so, this time server will actually need to create a signed token. Now in this example, it just so happened that credentials are valid, so the server creates that signed token and sends it to the client. Now this is one of the first differences between the cookie-based authentication and token-based authentication. When it comes to the cookie-based authentication, um, server actually places that cookie um, to the client, to the browser, and there is a specialized mechanism for that. So as soon as the server sends that cookie to the client, client doesn't need to do anything, that cookie is automatically stored in the browser and will be included in every future request. But in this scenario, the server will actually send this signed token purely just as one data. So the client will need to handle this by itself because the server sends this token just as it would send any other data. So there is nothing special about this, so it's just a long piece of string. Now the client receives this token and now it needs to store it somewhere on the client side. Now the most common place is the local storage, but the tokens can also be stored in the session storage or even a cookie as well, which 
could bring some confusement to the token-based authentication, cookie-based authentication, because even the token-based authentication can be stored in a cookie as well. Now, let's say we store it in a local storage. So now what happens is if the client wants to ask for some uh, protected resource, it will simply make that request, but it will also set this header called authorization and then bearer and then the token string itself. So it will pull this token from say local storage in this example and will send this piece of data to the server. Now the server will be able to get a handle on this token and then the server will actually decode that token and will check whether the token is valid or not. Now in the case in which the token is valid, server will simply treat this client as authorized to do this action and will send back the protected resources to the client. One of the big differences between token-based authentication and the cookie-based authentication is that the token-based authentication is stateless, meaning the server this time does not keep a record of which users are logged in or which uh, tokens have been issued, like it did on the cookie side of things. If you remember, server kept a track of active sessions in a database, now it doesn't happen here. And because of that, the server has less things to do and it is more scalable that way. And so what happens is in the cookie-based authentication, the backend, the server, um, has to do lookup uh, and to check whether the, the session ID uh, is stored in that active session database. And it is quite likely that that round trip is likely to, to take longer than the server just decoding the token. So the token-based authentication should yield more performance out of the box. Now, really quickly, some of the big differences between uh, cookies and tokens are the following. So when it comes to the cookies, I already told you that there is a specialized way of handling them such that they are automatically included in all requests, meaning as soon as the browser receives a um, cookie for some particular domain, it will always keep on sending that cookie back to the server. Now, that could be both a good and a bad thing. Good in a way because it doesn't require us to do more work to, to do that, but bad maybe because like it will always keep sending those cookies even when they are not required to be sent. Another thing with the cookies is that they work really well with singular domains and subdomains. So if you have, let's say, site called foo.com, um, it will work really nicely on that domain. But as soon as you have another site, let's say called bar.com, now it's really, really messy to actually send the cookies from the foo.com to the bar.com site. And that's one of the messy things about them. When it comes to the tokens features, um, it is up to us, like I said in the previous diagram, it is up to us to actually keep track of the tokens in the client side of things and actually keep including them in all requests. So we don't necessarily need to include them in all requests. And one really big thing about tokens is that they work well with multiple domains and subdomain, which will be actually really crucial for us because the way we're building this application, we will have two projects pretty much. One is going to be the front end and the other is going to be the back end. And now you can imagine they could be hosted different domains and we really want to be able to authenticate over cross domains in this example. So with all of that said, um, our peak is going to be token-based authentication for this series. Um, it is where the industry is, is heading and we are here to learn all the bleeding edge um, things. And also the way we organize this project, it is really helpful for us to be able to authenticate using multiple domains. So for example, we will have our application, say React.js frontend on the rapp.com domain, and we will have our Express.js backend server. Say we could use something like api.rapp.com, or maybe we can use totally different domain. We can call it our server.com. And now we want to be able um, 
for this front end to actually authenticate on this domain that that can be hosted uh, on totally different domain and also maybe we would want to actually create mobile application at some point so in order for a mobile application to be able to do authentication uh, with our server, we also will benefit greatly from using the token-based authentication. Okay, so that's that for this video. I hope I at least helped you a bit in understanding the token-based authentication versus the cookie-based authentication and that you now know the main differences. The main differences being that cookie work really well on single domain and they are automatically sending all requests and that the token-based authentication is, is working flawlessly on all the different domains but it is up to us to actually include that token in every request that we want to send and that the token-based authentication is really scalable especially in this world where the single page applications are on the rise and you have something like this when you need to manage several different servers and you want all of them to work um, nicely together so i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching this and leave me any feedback if you have